This is a this is a session on uh, on Drupal and business. It's about sales and marketing, um, on how to. If you're, I don't know who of you is a, is a customer, a Drupal customer. Who is an agency, a provider, agency, All right? So session could also have been called. Uh, Stop selling Drupal website, but <laughs> sell open digital experiences. Um, to give you a, a quick intro, so um, about myself. So I've been involved in uh, in, in Drupal from for some time. Um, I started out as a developer, but founding uh, Drop Solids, I got involved with sales and marketing, and I really had to. Uh, I spend a lot of time with customers selling Drupal to them, showing them what's the, the power of Drupal, and this has evolved a lot since the last 10 years. Um, DropSolid itself is a, is a company in Belgium, founded in Belgium. Um, we've been active for seven years, we have a team of 70 people, and we provide everything companies need to move from a website to a digital experience from all the way from strategy, UX design, implementation, optimization, and we also have a, a platform that allows you to host all these things. Um, from this experience, um, yeah, we found out a lot on how to sell Drupal to customers and show them what are the strong points. So um, as of 2020 and also about, I think the trend started uh, two years ago that selling Drupal as, as, a, as a product it's not good enough anymore. Customers are looking for more uh, and what we figured out is that most of the customers want to know the behavior of their users, of their customers and customers who are using the Drupal website to either buy products, find information, interact with, with the community, uh, do something and the, the platforms that we're building now really need to leverage this data, this user data, to enhance the experience. So what, what, we've, um, what we've came up with is, is a, a digital roadmap to show customers, look, you probably as a business have a website right now so most most of the times everyone already has some type of a website um, but it can be really simple it can be really simple um, where you just show your products and, and have some social and some paid search you maybe send some emails that for most businesses small businesses would be okay but larger enterprises and larger organizations, they, do, they need to do a lot more. Customers expect a lot more. And then you see things um, like marketing automation appearing, personalization appearing. Um, could be rule-based, but could also be uh, based on what you learn from your users. And it all the way goes up to the most engaged state where you are building um, experiences that are unique to every user. 
Huh? And very important, if you look at the KPIs, I don't know who, who of you is in, is in marketing. Okay. Yeah? yeah? So uh, these are marketing KPIs. So yeah. to determine if you're doing a good job as a marketer, used to be, are you driving traffic to this website and are you getting conversions? Uh, if you look at the most engaged state, the KPI is lifetime value. Lifetime value meaning how much is a customer spending with, you, spending with your business over its lifetime. So building a digital experience focuses really on, on, on this. It focuses on how to get the customer stay with you as long as possible because what you are providing is really good and nobody else can do it. And most of the time that's when it's really personalized. And how we do this, eh, because there's a, a lot of channels. Ten years ago, all these ch most of these channels didn't exist. Um, the customer wants to be treated centrally. They're used to it. Big companies are providing already this experience. Um, so you want to give your customers the same experience, whether where he is, in what context he is, or on what channel, what experience he is having. So if we look at, at the data, I looked up some, uh, some data that, um, that proves why investing in customer experience is so profitable. Why lifetime value should be the KPI, you should be going after it. This is research on uh, customer experience improvement projects. And what the data is showing is that 93% of all these projects is measuring a return on investment while financially or another business metric or uh, a positive review from a customer. Uh, if you look at this, what we see is increased customer satisfaction, loyalty, increased revenue, increased lifetime value is, is the top three most um, KPIs. But we also have uh, like reduced cost of services, a better brand experiences, uh, a reduced cost of acquisition. So all these things if you're investing in, 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 in your customer experience and personalize this, your, your, your customer wins a lot. This is a specific example from the sales business. If, if you can have, uh, for example, promoters, they're 40% uh, uh, less likely to churn and 50% uh, more likely to give you uh, a review decreasing your customer acquisition costs. And this is, for example, uh, an index of companies. It's like a stock index where uh, the stock index put together companies that are investing in customer experience. And if you would have invested in uh, 2,000, 100 euros, you would have gotten five times more than you've invested your money in standard market funds. So this is how dramatic these companies that are investing in customer experiences are winning. There's some really obvious examples like Facebook, Amazon, and Google that have been doing this since then. Um, now the technology is available for every company to do the same thing. And that's where um, where Drupal also comes in. So to summarize this, eh, customer lifetime value is the amount the customer is spending at your business during its lifetime. Acquisition cost, of course, is your sales and marketing cost divided through number of customers. And this thing is really scalable because a lot of companies are providing this personalized experience through people. People are not scalable. A digital platform is. So that's also a big advantage. And if we look at how this trend in investing in customer experience has an impact on websites. Um, websites, um, and we already see it like in the last half year, we see it appear in public tendering. We see these tenders are not 
asking to build them a new CMS or a new website. They ask to build an experience platform, a digital experience platform. So websites are becoming digital experience platforms. Key terms are personalization, omni-channel. That's where the whole uh, headless Drupal uh, story uh, also hooks in. Analytics and user experience. And other keywords that customers are looking for is decreasing these marginal costs, basically becoming scalable uh, using cloud AI and integrations. So, does anyone has heard of a DXP, of a digital experience platform? Who has? No? So, CMS, Content Management System, as far as companies like Gartner, analyst companies are concerned, CMS is obsolete. So they are not publishing Magic Quadrants. You probably know about Magic Quadrants where you see the different companies. Uh, they're not going to update this magic quadrant anymore for CMS. It has moved to DXP. So DXP is the next version of a CMS. Uh, we think Drupal should follow this trend. Um, and what is a DXP? A DXP is a platform that connects the inside of your organization with the outside of your organization in a digital way. Uh, so everything you know about your customers, your products, the intelligence your business has, how do you bring this to the outside through all these different channels to your customer? It's like giving them the same personalized experience digitally than you would have an employee of for example a bank or an insurance company explaining and selling it to them in a personalized way how can a digital platform do this huh? this is if, like the previous slide is is mostly what i show to people in business in business ro roles uh, managers, marketing managers, uh, customer experience managers. Um, this is a slide that I show to uh, people in IT. So how does this translate? It's like the, the core systems are mostly there. Uh, the ERP system, the CRM system, uh, the product uh, inventory management system, the asset management system, authentication layer, and then the top layer the experience layer, that's, that's what we are talking about. Used to be a website, CMS driven website, powered by Drupal. Now we can do more. Huh? This is what I mostly show to marketing, people in marketing, who understand the, the way of attracting uh, awareness, getting people interested making them buy things um, and all these tools uh, use digital channels to to draw them in or even outbound uh, if your sales representatives use tools and then you have a lot of marketing technology that you can use to drive people through the funnel like a tool like Mautic for example open source marketing automation it helps you to uh, capture the awareness send people emails notifying them on the right moment, giving them information on the right time, and drive them all the way to the funnel. And on the other hand is the analytics tooling. This is, this is the, the, mar the marketing uh, technology stack that we are using at DropSolid to, to market our pro products glo globally. So that's all the tools, but yours can, can look totally different. Eh? But all this traffic is coming to a platform that's that obviously we are also using a uh, Drupal to capture all this traffic and to personalize the experience of everyone landing on our on our um, on our website platform. To give you an idea of what these uh, these things um, provide you, like if you if you really use personalization in these experiences, 
And these are, um, these are statistics from proprietary competitors. Like you see tools like Bloomreach and Ignition One. Um, on the next page, we have Salesforce Commerce Cloud. Uh, we have... Um, yeah, we have we have these these proprietary systems that are already providing this to the market. So Drupal is getting a lot more comp competition from all these things. Uh, you see companies like Salesforce appearing. Uh, you see companies like uh, SAP. Um, a lot of companies that were in the CRM space are entering the digital experience market, uh, and their big thing is that look, we can personalize your experience based on the data we have um, from your customers. So it will be better than just using a CMS. Huh? So if you look at this, uh, more times on page, clicks per page, decreased bounce rates, higher email open rates, all these things increase a lot compared to a regular CMS driven website. This is, this is data for, for commerce. Um, but it's also true for information websites, for community websites. If you can personalize it, all the engagement just goes up, greater conversion rate. So this is serious competition for a platform like Drupal. So we think we should leverage Drupal because it has everything to, to leverage data um, to get to the same thing. So how do you sell Drupal as a DXP? Uh, what's needed? We've tried to solve this problem uh, by showing our customers like, look, you need basically four components to build a DXP. You need a CMS, commerce component. Drupal is perfect for that. Uh, you need a marketing automation component. There's open source Mautic. Uh, you need a component for personalization. That's where you, for example, you have uh, Unomi, which is a, an open source engine that allows you to, it's a rule engine that allows you to build these rules. And DropSolid has contributed the, the module, uh, the Unomi module on Drupal.org to connect this engine to Drupal uh, in the same way that you can uh, for example, have the Apache Solar module connecting the Apache Solar engine to Drupal is the same with you know me. And then the last thing is business intelligence, where you're building dashboards to show if your personalized experiences are actually performing better than your uh, normal uh, experiences. Of course, all these things need to be hosted. Uh, so that, that's where the, the platform comes in. It allows you to easily host all these components on, uh, on one platform. Um, to build it and to have your marketers work with this, uh, uh, you, need, you need an installer, local development tools, DevOps, all these things for developers and for marketers. Yeah, you need to create these segments to personalize your platform on. Um, you need to build these insights in, in dashboards. So all these things uh, you can build on the platform. And to give you an idea, we, we had a, a couple of cases, like for example, uh, for a, a hospital. I don't know who has a hospitals as customer. No, no one? No. It's a vertical. Uh, that has a, like a search function. We've personalized the search function. We made sure like using machine learning, we increased the relevancy and we, we um, increased it from 55% to 91. And what happened is that like all the, all the phone calls that came in, like for example, if people were calling for uh, how much is a, a supplement for a room when I want to be alone in a room. Uh, if people search this, they got like things for uh, food supplements. So the search engine didn't really, wasn't really smart and they didn't really show any personalized 
uh, search results like a search engine like Google would do. Um, yeah, what do people do? They call the hospital. So somebody has to explain it for like 15 minutes or half an hour. So all these calls were eliminated, saving a lot of operational, uh, giving them a lot of operational efficiency. And in general, um, we're working with them to move from a bunch of websites, basically, which has all the information and you have to go and look for it and it's not personalized, to one platform where you can communicate through all these channels and leverage the data you have on your customers or users. So that's in a, in a, in a bigger picture. Um, another one is like, for example, for uh, if you use Drupal as a DXP, if you use it headless, you can create multiple channels and also provide this personalized experience across all these channels. Like, for example, they've put uh, a screen in their stores where you can select your product in three clicks very easily. It's using the same underlying Drupal platform. Um, for example, this one, it's, a, it's an, an integration, it's a shopping experience. Um, using the DXP approach, we, we, we allow them to get 300% more in-store meetings driving their business, they sell uh, mattresses. So thinking of not just providing a CMS or a commerce experience, but providing a digital experience that allows you to leverage what you know about your customers can dramatically increase the results. So if your competitors are offering a platform that does all these things and you're just offering a CMS, the customer is likely to going to buy the one who is showing them all these business results because of the new capabilities that are possible. So, um, there's a demo, but then you'll have to wait to tomorrow because our CTO has a presentation. Uh, he has a keynote and there's a, a, a demos on how it works. Uh, so how do you connect this you know me personalization engine with Drupal? So I would really invite you to tomorrow to come and look. We're going to present it together because he stayed in, uh, in Belgium because of uh, the thing going on. Uh, <laughs> And he, he is, uh, but he's going to present remote and I'm going to assist him uh, tomorrow to do so. So if you really want to see how it, how it works and how, how, how you can do it yourself, you can come and see it tomorrow. So um, my goal today is to convince you in this session that selling Drupal as a CMS website will not be enough anymore, that you really need to look into uh, how to sell it as a DXP. So you can also give your customers and customers a personalized experience and give them better business results from their platforms. And the win for, for you as an agency owner will be that your customer will, will even spend more than they used to. So it's, it's, a, it's a really huge opportunity. Um, uh, what, what, what we are trying to solve is to help everyone to, to do this for their customers by making it easier, to make the hosting easier, to uh, give you the interfaces to manage it, um, and, and, and to really being able to offer uh, this as a DXP. So, that's it. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Um, you were talking about CRM. Um, how does how do you sort of think about CRM within the architectural picture that you showed us? So you had obviously CMS, you had Drupal, business intelligence. Quite often we work with CRM. We're always working with a third party CRM, you know. So it's uh, just wondering how, how you conceive of that within this model, if you see one. 
Yeah, so let, let's maybe go a little bit deeper into that. So uh, customer data management. So basically, this Unomi engine, it's a customer data management platform. That's how it's called. Eh? Wow. And what it does is it, it basically, it's, it's, a, it's a database, a big database. Uh, it's based on Elasticsearch. Wow. So it creates records of profiles. So everything you know about one customer, you can store as a field in that record. You can also draw in information from a CRM system okay. in that record. Yeah? Okay. The advantage storing this in a, in, in a big database, in a customer data managed system, is like, for example, if you want to apply machine learning algorithms, for example, to search for patterns yeah. in the behavior data, because you get a lot of data, it's, mm -hmm. it's really difficult to uh, make it rule-based manually. Yeah. So if you use machine learning, you can search for these patterns. It's easier on a system like this. So it, it expands your capabilities uh, a lot by using this system. Okay. You could all also just connect uh, Drupal to the CRM system and make rule-based personalization attempts like yeah. we've been doing for yeah, a while. Using a customer data management system allows you to uh, enhance these capabilities. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, if you look at GDPR, for example, right now you need to prove to your customer what you are doing with their data. Consent management is built into the Unomi customer okay. data management platform. So you will also be able to show to the customer everything you are storing about them and why you, how you are using it. Gotcha, wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, I think what, what, what this allows you to do is build your... Uh, yeah, what Facebook and Google have been doing for decades. Eh? It allows you to build this, but, but, but on a smaller scale. Uh, leveraging these new technologies, leveraging Drupal also, because Drupal is a fantastic system. You can uh, use these, these segments. You know me is producing in every Drupal component. That's what the, the module is doing, but I, I don't want to spoil Nick's talk too much, but uh, you will be able to use these segments in, 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 uh, in paragraphs, in, in blocks, in rules, in views, and you know, any Drupal component, you'll, you'll be able to, as a site builder, use these, these segments this thing is producing um, yeah, to personalize your experience. And it's because Drupal is so structured that it's so easy to plug in a system like this. Wouldn't be possible with something like WordPress or something that doesn't structure its data as, as good as Drupal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, with the business intelligence element, uh, what are you using for that? Yeah, well, we're using something, it's Cumulio, but you can also use Google Data Studio or, okay. or even Power BI, or you can, you can use your own BI gotcha. uh, tooling suite uh, to do this. Um, okay. Yeah. To pull in the data, yeah. What's the sort of master record in all of this? Because they, 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 this all sounds great, right? But uh, every time I've ever done an integration between, let's say, say a, 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 even simple integration between a CRM and a CMS, let's say, you end up in an argument about who owes what data and where, and the politics of your organization take the whole thing down this morning in about 20 minutes, right? So I can exactly imagine presenting this and people going, yeah, that sounds great, but we need such and such a transaction to come back into the CRM because otherwise, yeah, the master data set, you can see, uh, you have a DMP here, um, could be even another system. The CDM system is, is designed for you as a marketer to use the data you need. So the <coughs> argument uh, that is there is like, okay, how can we get the data there? And once it's there, the whole system can use it. But then it's it's separated from, so you, you basically put your data in a system and that's preparing it to use it in your experience layer. So your product warehouses it all and makes it available? 
I wouldn't advise you to use the CDM as your yeah. master's data system. No, this is the system that you're using to use the data in your experience layer. But you could have a separate master data system, yeah. separate, eh? which has even more data and more knowledge. But everything you want to use in the experience layer, you should put in the CDM. All right, any more questions? Uh, um, commerce, um, how, so you're, you're delivering where people want e-commerce, you're delivering it out of the platform on Drupal Commerce. Yeah. Um, how um, kind of competitive do you find that when you're sort of up against your Magentos and your um, big Yeah, for, for like, pure e-commerce websites. Where is a significant component, I suppose? How do you, I'm guessing that's quite, quite competitive. Like the use cases we've had were not pure commerce, because if it's pure commerce, I want to have my offering there. I'm a B2C, uh, you, you, yeah, Magento is 10 times stronger than, than Drupal commerce. But from the instance that, like the case that I showed with Sleep Life, their goal was not to sell that much online. It has commerce, yeah. but the goal is to get the customer first to the store, get them try the mattress, sell them there, and then upsell them later. Right. So it's like this online offline combination with content, with stories, with uh, shopping rich media, ex yeah, yeah. yeah, these type of things. I think the, I mean, the e-commerce e world is coming this way as well though. I think when you look at things like big commerce and where Magento is going, it, it's heading for this architecture. So it's, they're coming at it from an e-commerce end rather than a content end. Yeah, exactly. That, that's heading for this. It's, but you like the CRM systems are. It's all, it's all converging. You have these types of companies who are entering the market. You have companies like Salesforce and, and SAP entering that same market. And then you have the traditional players like uh, Sidecore and Adobe and, uh, and Acquia, who is also with, with the leaders in that market. So it's going to be one. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but... This is also aimed at the mid-size of the market. So, so this product is aimed at mid-size projects. Uh, to, to give you an idea, uh, license prices are in the tens of thousands, not in the hundreds of thousands, like yeah. the other uh, proprietary systems and large enterprise providers. So that's also, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Thank you.